to part two of a three-part series with our scholar and residence Rabbi Mark Spira. Uh, I am so excited to have Rabbi Spiro here that I got my hair cut today. That's how excited I am. That was a reminder to please turn your cell phones to silent or vibrate. Um, so, just my kids, they have this <laughs> So Rabbi Mark Spear is the Executive Director of Living Judaism, which is a nonprofit organization here in Seattle that's devoted to uh, helping to improve Jewish lives through applied Jewish wisdom. Where wisdom comes alive. Jewish wisdom comes alive. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> um, as I mentioned, this is part two of a three-part series. We had the first part uh, a week ago, Shabbat. And for those of you who weren't there, um, don't worry. This, Mark's going to uh, talk a little bit about what we talked about there, bring you up to speed, and then you'll get a lot of value out of today's presentation. So today's talk is called Free Will, uh, Moral Combat, Free Will and the Di Dynamics of the Inner Struggle. And so we'll uh, have some time for Rabbi Spiro to give his presentation, and then we'll leave some time open for questions and answers afterwards. Rabbi Mark Spiro. Thank you, Randy. Thank you guys for coming back out on weeknights. I know when Shabbos, you're kind of here already, so it's uh, good to see some folks return. And there's some, how many people were, were not here when I spoke? Okay, so we got a little bit of uh, catching up to do, but we're definitely gonna, gonna give you some uh, background before we move ahead. But what we talked about uh, on Shabbos was important. So I'm going to, because really the truth is everything I'm gonna talk about now is, is based on that. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll first start by by recapping what we uh, what we talked about, but I especially want to thank um, Avi Kessler for showing up in his pajamas. <laughs> uh, you guys, uh, you probably don't have anything to do anyway. But Avi, and Northwest I, Casual. What's that? Northwest <laughs> Casual. And if Avi gets out here in his pajamas, that's that's a real vote of confidence for me. So when we let, when we spoke uh, a little over a week ago. I really wanted to emphasize to, to everybody that, that this was a very simple talk. I'm a simple person. I don't have anything very complex to say. It's a very simple talk. And really, the truth of the matter is all three of these talks are all me talking pretty much around the same idea. But there's a lot to talk about around that idea. But I, I want to I wanna keep bringing us back to the simple essence of what I've been trying to say and what I'm going to continue to talk about, which is very simply that we as human beings have tremendous creative power. That's what I spoke about two weeks ago. We have tremendous creative power. And that creative power is literally what makes us the Tselem Elohim in the image of God. And we talked about this at length. What does that mean? It means that we, like God, create, we create the world that we live in. We don't experience reality. We experience the reality that we create. And I went into a little bit more depth and spoke about the fact that we create via our thinking. That we think and we bring thought to life. And that power that we have to bring thought to life is a very, very strong power. It means that the things that we create, the experience that we have within our own head, within our own being, feels absolutely 100% authentic and real to us. Now we all know, if we've been around on this planet long enough, we know people, you always, you know, you look at the next person and you check out what they're experiencing and occasionally we, we, we get the sense that they're nuts, right? <laughs> but they're totally convinced, right? So if, if you haven't seen it about yourself, that's why God created a lot of people on the planet, you can go look at somebody else and you can see you know, it's not just them, that's you, just, you know, just in another form. We all do it. We have a tremendous capacity via our thinking, and we are thinking beings. We spend our entire lives thinking, we can't control our thinking, we think all the time. And we are constantly bringing that thought into life for ourselves, into a real 100%, you know, tangible, palpable, emotional, emotion-laden, uh, visceral experience that we call reality, but we do not really experience reality with a capital R. We have not the ability to do so. We experience our reality. So, 
very powerful. And then we, we just really, this is really all we spoke about. We spoke about where we see this in the sources. We're not going to talk about that again tonight. We spoke about some personal examples, some, some, some anecdotal examples about how, how that is, how that comes about and how we, how we observe that in our lives. But the important thing is to recognize this, this fundamental point, right? That we experience what we create. And that's what makes us Bitzel Malakim as God. And I said literally, we read every morning in our prayers about God. He is Bechavish Bechol Yom Tamid Masebereshis. He renews every moment constantly the act of creation. When we say we are Bitzel Malakim in his image, we mean literally. Just as he creates every moment, so do we create. Every moment. It's a principle. It's like physics. There is nothing, no other way that we experience anything except through our thinking that we bring to life. Okay? Is it, now, is there any, any questions on that? And by the way, I, I welcome you to stop me anywhere along the line if you have a question or a clarification. Come on in. Um, because I love to interact. So please do. The... Second point that I made, or ancillary point that I made alongside of this, was that what we create has absolutely nothing to do with what's out there. That we have the capacity to create regardless of the circumstances in our lives. Whatever it is that we create, right? That's why different people go into the same situations, and one of them walks out with a completely different experience than the other. Now, we tend to believe that life happens from the outside in, that the circumstances, the people, places, things of our lives are what determine how I am feeling inside of me. If I'm feeling, if I don't have a lot of money in my bank account, I'm feeling insecure. Of course I'm feeling insecure. How would you feel if you didn't have a lot of money in your bank account? That's the assumption that we make, and I'm suggesting no. I'm suggesting, not only am I suggesting, but I brought in Perkyavos to suggest as well that the experience of wealth we know from Perkyavos, Ezehu Ashir, who is wealthy, one who takes pleasure in their portion, meaning it has absolutely nothing to do with your portion. It has to do with whether you take pleasure in it. What we create is completely independent, not only powerful and palpable, but totally independent. We have unbelievable creative freedom when it comes to the experience that we make for ourselves, the world that we create. We literally create a world for ourselves, and we have tremendous independence when it comes to that. Okay. So we create, we create powerfully, we create independently, we create with our thinking. And whenever I get to this point, the assumption tends to be, ah, so obviously, if I want to, you know, what, what do I do about this? If I create with my thinking, if I have negative thinking, I, get, I have a negative experience. If I have more positive thinking, I have a more positive experience. So, obviously, I should control my thinking. I should think better thoughts, right? How do you like that? So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Think better thoughts, right? Does that, what does that, uh, how does that sound to you? Mom Sounds easy, pie. right? What's that? Mom and apple pie. <laughs> Power of positive thinking. Power of positive thinking. Well, believe it or not, I'm not going to talk about that. Okay, and there's a reason why I'm not going to talk about I wish I could teach you how to control your thinking. I would be very wealthy. I probably wouldn't be standing here right now. <laughs> I would have put all the drug dealers out of business and everybody else who's in the feel-good industry. Okay, why? Because if you can control your thinking and think positive thoughts throughout life and it creates this positive experience, then who wouldn't be doing it? We'd all be doing it, right? So most people tend to assume I'm here to talk more about, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy, which is, you know, the kind of, it's a similar type of approach. Think better, make, make nice affirmations for yourself, you know, think positive thoughts. The problem with that is, I don't know how to do it. And if I did, I would teach you, but I don't. The good news is I don't believe you need to know. Okay? What I want to talk about, though, is what do we, what do we do? What is it we're supposed to do? It's a reasonable idea. I just don't believe it's doable. That doesn't mean that sometimes we can't think positive thoughts, and sometimes those positive thoughts can help us. I agree, there are times when that happens. The problem is that what I'm, what I'm suggesting is that if that does help, it's a pretty good indication that you're not very lost, okay? You know, if you can kind of think your way out of it, I mean, 